you don't know what this is, commence education now. Yeah, baby, 1911, series 80. And that's what this video is about. Hickok 45 here. We are going to feature the 1911 Series 80 uh, 45 ACP today. Have not done that, and I uh, hope you realize that we're coming up on the anniversary of the 1911, the 100-year anniversary. So maybe you'll be seeing a few more 1911 videos over the next six to eight, ten months. All right. Today it's the Series 80. I want to talk to you just a little bit about it, and I wanted to shoot a couple of Series 80 guns. Let me lay them down here. Uh, let's take a look at them. Uh, they're both clear. These are the same gun, Series 80. In about 1983, the uh, 1911 underwent uh, kind of a significant change. Before we mention that, though, specifically, a 1911 plain Jane basic model is not all that different from any other 1911 uh, basic model. Now, these are both Colts. But any 1911 that's pretty much mil-spec, uh, military configuration, uh, has not been souped up with fancy beaver tails and extended safeties and all those sorts of things, there's just not a lot of difference. Okay, a lot of the 1911s you see on the gun shelf and the gun shows, they're kind of like this. Now, there are also these days, you know, in the last 15, 20 years, there has been a proliferation of 1911s where you do have a lot of the fancy beaver tails and extended safeties and things that... Uh, that we used to spend a lot of money to um, add. You know, we'd go take them to a good gunsmith and uh, have all kinds of things, sites installed that, that you can get right off the shelf now pretty, pretty well, particularly if you want to compete with it. Well, and I've done that, but I uh, have a old special place in my heart for just an old basic kind of a GI configuration 1911. And the Series 80 is not all that different from that. So what I wanted to do in addition to shooting the gun, the guns, again, they're both the same, just a different uh, material that they're made of. We have stainless and we have blue in terms of finish. In about 1983, the major change was adding, let me get my little pointer here, high-tech pointer, was adding this firing pin block, if you can see up in there. See, that's just like what a Glock has. You know, that has to be depressed in order for the firing pin to strike the primer because that's what frees up the firing pin and it's just very similar to what the Glock has okay and you hear that uh, you know bad mouth quite a bit because uh, it's a little more difficult to uh, to get a really good trigger job gunsmiths will will tell you I guess that that it's a little bit harder to work on the gun it's hard to break them down a little slower to break them down and if you want an exquisite trigger job of two and three quarters pounds or something, it's, it's a little more difficult to, uh, to achieve that. And I'm not a trigger man on, a, on 1911, so I can't speak to that with authority. From my reading, what I understand is if you just want a good crisp or a good solid trigger, four or five pounds, it's still not a big problem. But if you really are going for that uh, competition trigger, as light as you can get, still safe, uh, it's, it's more of a, a, an ordeal to, to get it just right. Gunsmith has to, to work harder, know what he or she's doing. So the firing pin block, the other thing, uh, as I understand, they added in, the, in the 1983 in the, the Series 80 was uh, the half talk on the hammer. They changed the cut on the hammer, and it, I think it's even closer. I mean, you just barely pull it, and there's the half cock. And I think it was a little more secure, a little less likely to, if you hit it, to, to fall forward, although it still will. It still could hit the, the primer. You have to be careful of that. Of course, you have the firing pin block. Uh, so a little safer in that regard, perhaps. Those were two of the biggest changes in 83, the firing pin block being the, the biggest change. And while we're looking at them and, and uh, look at them kind of close up there, you see the, the, the enormous difference that a finish on a gun makes. Most of you are aware of that, looking at revolvers and, and everything else. But isn't it amazing in terms of uh, what the finish does, in terms of the overall just look of a gun, stainless versus carbon steel that's blued. And of course, you have different grips as well. But these two guns are the same, same configuration. This one I've had, I don't know, seven, eight, ten years. This one is a little newer, just uh, two or three years old. 
but they're both series 1991 series 80 guns okay so I've pointed out the difference in the series 80 and now not all guns that have been made since 80 83 have that firing pin block by the way you know your uh, Springfield I know back in the, the early 90s when I was competing people would buy those to soup them up and add all the things that they wanted to add to it uh, because they didn't have the firing pin block they would especially gravitate towards the Springfield and of course I'm talking about a time period in 1990 when Springfield and Colt were about the only ones making these things. There was some other, Caspian and AMT maybe, there were some other companies, but there weren't many making a 1911, if you can believe that. Now I walk into a gun shop and there are probably 20 different brands of 1911s, and a lot of them make a GI model, and yeah, I mean, it's a forest out there. I, you know, I get a lot of questions about them. I really don't know that much. Uh, I have a Springfield that I got back in 1990, you've seen it, and I've got these, and then uh, this is actually John's gun. and. Uh, a couple of others but uh, the Ed Brown really is the only one I have souped up now all right in 1991 why are these called 1991 these were 1991 models all right not a lot of different again a difference uh, but in 1991 Colt decided to kind of go back and, and make the GI model uh, as, as much as possible it actually came out in 1991 series 80 and kind of a uh, what would you call it, a bargain uh, version, where they offered in a, uh, I think a Parkerized finish, where it wasn't as you know smooth and finished, you know, beautiful blue gun like this one really is. Had a different roll mark on it, and I think it had just rubber grips. So they're trying to keep the price down as much as possible, still offer a quality gun, and I think that was fairly successful. But then in I think it was around 2001 or 2002, they kind of upped it a little bit. It was very popular. And so they started putting a nice finishing on, finish on them again, and they uh, changed the roll mark back to more the classic roll mark, put nice grips on them again, and if you wanted them. And so, so what you ended up with was kind of back something close to the old original 1911. And the reason I say that, and when I say the original, I mean, you know, 1911, 1912, 1915, uh, is because in 1991 in that model, if you uh, see one designated as a 1991, it is a Series 80, all right? But it has the flat mainspring housing back here. That's a, that's a difference. Then it has the long trigger. And that's the way they came out. If you see an old gun that's actually an old 1911 model from, you know, 1912 or something, it, it will have the longer trigger and it'll have the flat mainspring housing. And around 1924 is when they put the hump on that and then the short, they shortened the trigger, uh, both of which I, I don't like. I prefer a flat mainspring housing. So this is a popular gun in a GI configuration. This gun I think sells really well. It's a very popular model and most people like the flat mainspring housing and most like the long trigger unless you have small hands. So and then of course you have a better sight than you, you had on the original 1911s. You know they're famous for having little bitty sights. So if you don't mind just a standard kind of GI issue, pretty much GI issue gun, this 1991 really fills the bill. Uh, it uh, it has decent sights. You got the long trigger, the flat mainspring housing. You got the firing pin safety, which you know whatever you think about it, it does probably make the gun a little safer. So it's just a nice gun. You still got the uh, the vertical serrations, which really screams traditional. You know a lot of newer 1911s have the angled uh, serrations. They have them up here and everything. And of course that when you see that, it doesn't look anything like an original 1911. You know to me. Uh, maybe very practical, but this gun really is close to the original. All right, so 1991, uh, nice gun. It is a Series 80, but it's a specifically the 1991 model when they uh, went back to to that um, flat mainspring and the long trigger. Nice gun. Let's take a couple of shots. I know you're tired of hearing me yak about them. I've got all hand loads out here. This is 230 grain hardball. That's all I shoot, and that's all I've ever shot, even in competition uh, with a 1911. And I've got some, uh, uh, these are jacketed full ball ammo, as it's called, 230 grain uh, full metal jacket. The standard round for a 1911. Big old heavy round, heavy bullet. I load a lot of cast bullets. I brought some of those out. The same weight bullet. Uh, Interestingly enough, and many of you that shoot these know probably that you get a little bit different point of impact with a lead bullet. Uh, I always do. It seals the bore a little tighter because it's lead as it expands. 
and uh, you get a little more recoil and you get a slightly different point of impact. Shoots a little bit higher for me. And I'd actually shoot more of that uh, historically. Gosh, if I only knew how many thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of those I have fired. And uh, they're, they're, they both shoot very well. Let's just take a few shots. I also have just a mixture of magazines I found. If I have a malfunction, I really don't care. Uh, these guns are mainly range guns. And my brass, I don't sort, as I've told you before. Uh, I just load it and shoot it, load it and shoot it. If one won't go under the press uh, shell plate, I toss it out. If I see one that's split, throw it away. And uh, I don't worry about it. Same with the magazines. A couple of these, I think the springs are getting a little weak on them. But let's just take a few shots. Okay. Good old 1911. Gotta love them. Get one in there? Yeah. Sweet, sweet. Gotta love a 1911. That's throwing out a big, heavy bullet. Big, heavy bullet. Nice, pretty nice trigger, though, too, for a stock gun right off the shelf. Let's go long range. Take a couple of shots over there at the old gong. Let's try that pig again. I'm going to take it as a challenge now. There we go. <laughs> Got me a chicken. Sometimes I'm in the mood to shoot at those little targets, sometimes I'm not. Let's go for a turkey. Gotta love a 1911. Uh, they're just so much fun to shoot. I know I'm a Glock guy, supposedly, but I'm really not. Uh, I like Glocks, but I like these old 1911s. You know what? We're shooting this one too much. Let's wear out uh, John's gun a little bit. Let's get it dirty. Now, I think the sight picture is the same. Not bad, same side picture, 
he might have a little better trigger on that one. I'm not sure. Uh, let's try another magazine here. Try his up close. <laughs> oh, another bottle. <laughs> sweet, sweet. I mean, we've got bullets everywhere. I guess we're going to have to load some more if we shoot much more. See, same gun, uh, same trigger, same feel pretty much. You have rubber grips on this one, so it feels a little bit different. But uh, the 1991 is just a really nice, and I do get a lot of questions about which 1911, which 1911. I'm probably not as qualified to answer that as a lot of people are because I have, uh, you know, a couple, three Colts, and I've got the Ed Brown, I've got the Springfield and different things, and they have World War II. Yeah, I'm not really in the market. I don't go shopping for them. I don't compare pricing. Uh, I guess I don't talk with people a, a lot about them either. What what kind of luck they're having with certain models that much? I know everybody makes one. Uh, Colt does make a good one. You yeah. know, they still machine uh, you know most of their parts. I think probably more than any of the other makers possibly. Uh, I'll tell you where you can learn more about these things is on I believe it's 1911.org is a really nice website. And they go into each different brand, and uh, they deal with some of the history. It's a, it's a really nice forum. So if you're not familiar with that, I'm pretty sure it's www.1911.org. I mean, I, I'm a member there, and I just uh, don't go there too often. I have those places bookmarked, so uh, I forget what the exact site is sometimes. Let's, uh, let's load a couple of these cast bullets. If you're trying to, uh, to shoot uh, as economically as you can, you generally shoot cast bullets. And that's one nice thing about the old 1911 is that it uh, it does well with cast bullets. Some guns just seem to to do better with them than others. Glocks do fine if you have an aftermarket barrel, and uh, some people actually shoot them in the stock barrels. I I don't. I take the company's advice and don't. And no need to really do that. Uh, there's so many aftermarket barrels that work fine, like Lone Wolf, uh, generally. So, like I said, these cast bullets will point print a little bit higher. They're still 230 grain bullets and they'll even uh, recoil just a little bit more. Tighter seal. They smoke more because of the uh, the lube and everything. So let's take a few shots uh, with those. Uh, let's see. We'll just dirty up John's gun here. How's that? We'll make him clean it. Sweet gun, sweet gun. Oh, you know what? I know I get a lot of requests to do one thing, and I guess I'll give in today. And I don't know if it's mostly teenagers, uh, maybe it's old men, but I just kind of, I guess I brush them off. Uh, there are just certain things that are Hollywood and, and I, I don't really get into uh, at all much. But since these guns are exactly alike, Let's, uh, let's do something I do get a lot of requests for, but I never do. I, I don't know, it may have been 15 or 20 years since I've ever fired two guns at one time. You know, to me it's almost in the category of bump firing or, or this kind of action. You know, boom, 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 you know, holding it sideways. <laughs> but let's do it anyway. Guns are meant to be fun, and uh, now we've got to get them both hot. Safety on. Safety on, all right. Well, probably can't hit anything, but let's try this. All right, don't try this at home. Now, one thing I'll also point out, I have this gun in my left hand, and the safety's on the other side. And a lot of people just act like, you, if you don't have an ambidextrous safety, you know, you're, you're just hopeless, you know, if you ever had to use your left hand well, let me show you how easy it is to get the safety off. How about that? It's off, you know, when you put it back on. It's just a matter of a reach around there and you're ready to go. All right, okay. 
Take the off. Now this is kind of silly. I got to be careful. Let me back up a little bit. I don't want to get too close to the steel targets. Now obviously I cannot aim both at the same time, but maybe instinct will carry me through. I don't know. Let's see. I was trying to actually shoot them at the same time. If I went boom, 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 you know, I could hit something, I think. But anyway, it's hard to shoot. That's that's Hollywood, you know, for the most part. It's kind of like full auto. If I had a full auto uh, gun of some sort, I'd also demonstrate how spraying across a bank of targets uh, lots of times will get you mostly misses. Whereas aim fire, boom, 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 it's much more effective. That's another myth I wouldn't mind breaking sometime. But anyway, that's, it wasn't too impressive, was it? Well, like I said, I never do that, but I uh, thought I'd try. Ew. That leaves me with a bad taste in my mouth. I gotta shoot one more magazine. So uh, anyway, 1911 Series 80, uh, and this again is the 1991 uh, model. And uh, if you're looking for a, a newer gun, you want a Colt, and uh, you like the flat mainspring housing and you like the long trigger, because there's definitely a difference. You need to feel both and, and handle them. You really do. And then uh, you'll know pretty quickly which feels better to you. Uh, I highly recommend you try one of these, see how it feels, because if it feels good in your hand, that's what you want, okay? So 19 low. let's get as many rounds in there as we can. Put the Barney bullet in, then a full magazine. Got my old gun sight holster there. All right, 1911. Ooh, I see a bad guy. Doesn't get much better than 1911. And again, these are pretty much stock guns. There's nothing souped up about it. That's right from the factory. Uh, with everything I just uh, demonstrated and showed you, talked about. Uh, again, it's a 100 year anniversary coming up in the year 2011. So uh, we'll try to get these out occasionally. But this is a Series 80 model 1991. Happened to have two of them exactly alike. And thought you might uh, enjoy just uh, taking a closer look and seeing them in action. So as you know, with two 1911s, nice 1911s out here slinging lead, life is especially good.